simplify the square root of minus 4, the square root of minus 72, and the square root of minus 48 plus the square root of minus 27. Part 1, you want to simplify the square root of minus 4. Well, we cannot find the square root of a negative number, so we have to break it down into the square root of positive 4 multiplied by the square root of minus 1. We know these are multiplied because they're stuck together. The square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of minus 1 is i. Likewise, the square root of minus 9, we break down to be the square root of positive 9, multiplied by the square root of minus 1. We know these are multiplied because they're stuck together. The square root of 9 is 3, and the square root of minus 1 is i. So 9 and 4 are square numbers, and they always go first. And again, likewise, the square root of minus 16, we break down to be the square root of positive 16, multiplied by the square root of minus 1. This is because 16 multiplied by minus 1 is minus 16. The square root of 16 is 4, the square root of minus 1 is i. The square root of minus 1 is always equal to i, we need to learn this off by heart. And the letter i represents imaginary. Next we're going to work out the square root of minus 72. So again we cannot get the square root of a negative number so we break it down to be positive 72 and minus 1 because 72 times minus 1 is minus 72. So we get the square root of 72 multiplied by the square root of minus 1. In this case this dot represents multiply. Now 72 we can further break down to be the square root of 36 multiplied by the square root of 2 because 36 times 2 is 72. The reason for doing this is that 36 is a square number and we want to try and find square numbers whenever we can. And the square root of 36 is 6. The square root of 2 we cannot break down anymore so we leave it as the square root of 2. And the square root of minus 1 is i. So again the reason we did this is because we wanted to try and break up 72 into a set of factors or a factor pair that contained a square number. Here's a list of the first 12 square numbers. 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, 6 squared is 36, 7 squared is 49, 8 squared is 64, 9 squared is 81, 10 squared is 100, 11 squared is 121, and 12 squared is 144. The list of square numbers goes on forever. So whenever we're breaking up a number, into thirds or into roots we want to try and break it up into a factor pair that contains a square number so that's why we broke 72 down to be 36 multiplied by 2 because 36 is a square number and the square root of 36 is 6. In our next example we're trying to work out the square root of minus 32 so we break it down to be the square root of positive 32 multiplied by the square root of minus 1. The square root of 32 we want to break down as the square root of 16 multiplied by the square root of 2 because 16 times 2 is 32 and 16 is a square number 4 squared is 16. The square root of 16 is 4 the square root of 2 just stays as root 2 and the square root of minus 1 is i so the square root of minus 32 is actually 4 root 2 i. Part 3 simplify the square root of minus 48 plus the square root of 20, minus 27 so again, we cannot get the square root of a negative number. So the square root of minus 48, we're going to break down to be the square root of positive 48 multiplied by the square root of minus 1. And the square root of minus 27, we break down to be the square root of positive 27 multiplied by the square root of minus 1. Now the square root of 48, we can further break down to be the square root of 16 multiplied by the square root of 3 because 16 multiplied by 3 is 48 and the square root of minus 1 will just give us i. We can break 48 down into lots of different factors but remember we want a square number and 16 is a square number because 4 squared is 16. Likewise with the square root of 27 we're going to break it down to be the square root of 9 multiplied by the square root of 3 because 9 times 3 is 27 and the square root of minus 1 will just give us i and again 27 we specifically want to break down 
with a square number, which we put first, and 9 as a square number because 3 times 3 is 9. Now, the square root of 16 is 4. The square root of 3 just stays as the square root of 3. We cannot break that down anymore. And i stays as i. It's very important that the square root only goes over the 3. It does not go over the i. And a square root of 9 will give us 3 because 3 squared is 9. The square root of 3 just stays as the square root of 3. We can't break that down anymore. And i stays as i. So now we have 4 root 3i plus 3 root 3i, which gives us 7 root 3i. This is very similar as saying 4x plus 3x gives us 7x, or 4y plus 3y gives us 7y. Because we have root 3i stuck onto both, we just add the numbers in front. 4 plus 3 gives us 7. Simplify the following. i to the power of 3, or i cubed i to the power of 4, and i to the power of 49. So part 1, we want to simplify i cubed. Well, i cubed can be broken down as i squared multiplied by i, which is really i to the power of 1, because 2 plus 1 makes 3. So we know this from our rule, multiplying powers with the same base, we add the powers. So we have an i and an i, which is the same base, so we add the powers. 2 plus 1 is 3. We know that this i squared gives us minus 1, that you have to learn off by heart. And i to the power of 1 is just i. And minus 1 times i is just going to be minus 1i or minus i. So i cubed actually gives us minus i. Part 2. Simplify i to the power of 4. So i to the power of 4 is i squared raised to the power of 2. So when we raise a power to a higher power, we multiply the powers, and 2 times 2 is 4. This is another one of our laws of indices, and these are in our formula book. i squared is minus 1. We have to learn that off by heart, and we bring down the squared part. And minus 1 squared is really minus 1 times minus 1. And minus 1 times minus 1 is 1, so i to the power 4 is 1. Another way of doing this is saying i to the power 4 is equal to i squared times i squared because multiplying a power with the same base we add the powers and 2 plus 2 is 4. We know that i squared is minus 1 so this i squared is also minus 1 and minus 1 times minus 1 is plus 1. So we get the same answer as we did over here. Simplify i to the power of 49. So i to the power of 49 can be broken down as i to the power of 48 times i, which is really i to the power of 1, because 48 plus 1 is 49. And then 48 can be broken down as i squared raised to the power of 24, because when we raise a power to a higher power, we multiply the powers, and 2 times 24 is 48. And the reason that we've done that is because we want to get an i squared, because we know i squared is minus 1. And the i to the power of minus 1 just stays as i. i squared becomes minus 1. So it's going to be minus 1 raised to the power of 24, because we just bring down the power of 24. And that's still all multiplied by i. Minus 1 to the power of 24, you can do in your calculator. Or, or you might know that minus 1 to the power of an even number will always give us positive 1. So minus 1 to the power of 24 is 1, and we still have to multiply that by i, and 1 times i is just i. So i to the power of 49 is i. Solve the equation z squared plus 64 is equal to 0. Now we know that solve means find, in this case find z, or get z on its own. So we have z squared plus 64 is equal to 0. We bring the plus 64 over the equal sign, it becomes minus 64. So we have z squared equals minus 64. Next, we bring the squared over the equal sign. It becomes the square root. So we get z equals plus minus the square root of minus 64. And we have this plus minus because when we bring the squared over and it becomes square root, we don't actually know if it was the square root of a negative number or a positive number because anything squared always ends up giving us a positive number. 
So it could have originally been a plus or it could have originally been a minus. So we actually use both. We use plus minus. Next, we have the square root of minus 64, which we break down to be the square root of positive 64 multiplied by the square root of minus 1. Because 64 by minus 1 is minus 64. 64 is a square number. The square root of 64 is 8. So we just get the square root of 64 to be 8. And the square root of minus 1 is i. So we end up with z equals plus minus 8i, which really means z equals 8i or z equals minus 8i. So z is equal to both of these.